Good morning. It's great to have your company this morning as we meet together to worship the Lord. Thank you for joining with us. We begin with some words from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So Lord, as we come together to worship you today, no matter how we're feeling, whether we're joyful or whether we feel crushed in spirit, brokenhearted and crushed in spirit, we pray that you administer to us and help us to bless, to bless you, Lord, for who you are and for all you've done, to praise you with our lips, to glorify you and exalt the Lord as we worship together. So we, may your spirit minister to us now, speak into our lives, draw us closer to yourself, Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Meet with us now as we meet to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Raise my shoulder, King of heaven, to his feet I tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, in God's great love and his mercy, let us confess our sins to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the prayer for this tenth Sunday after Trinity. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as please you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The 13th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, beginning at the 18th verse. 
Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched in its branches. Again he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Father, as we turn to your word now, we pray that it would become a living word to us, that you would speak to us, that you'd help us to understand. And Lord, we pray that even by our coming together, we would grow in our relationship with you and our lives would be transformed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We had an amazing time last week uh, at Holiday Bible Club, focusing on the different aspects of God's character and nature. Our themes throughout the week were God is great, God is almighty, God is ruler, God is Emmanuel, and God is trustworthy. On Monday, when we were focusing on the theme of God is great, we thought about the way a chameleon changes to blend with its surroundings. Whereas God is constant and unchanging, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We had a different animal pal each day as we focused on who God is. We had Flip the Flapjack, the octopus who lives at the bottom of the sea. We had Clark the shark. We had Jam the jellyfish. And we had Trusty the macaw. The great news is that the God we read about in the Bible knows us, loves us, and wants us to know him and have a relationship with him. He wants us to know him as Emmanuel, God with us. That's why the Son of God left the glory and splendor of heaven and came to this earth. That's why during his earthly ministry, he revealed God's character and nature in so many different ways. And that's why, as an amazing and sacrificial, as an act of amazing and sacrificial love, Jesus died on the cross and was raised to life again. No matter who we are, no matter what we have done or may not have done, God loves us and wants the best for our lives. He wants people to know a restored relationship with him. He invites people to become members of his kingdom through putting their faith in Jesus as their savior and recognizing his rule and reign in their lives. Thinking about God, about who he is, about his character, about his nature, about his love, and his invitation to be members of his kingdom leads us to Jesus' rhetorical questions in our reading from Luke 13. What is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? Jesus asks the question, not expecting an answer from the people, but actually giving the answer. And he answers the question with two short, short parables, one about a mustard seed and the other about yeast. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree and the birds perched in its branches. Jesus talked about an image that was familiar to his listeners to help them understand something more about the kingdom of God. A mustard seed was one of the smallest seeds. But people knew if it was planted in the ground, it grew and became a tree big enough and strong enough for birds of the air to perch in its branches and to find nourishment and shelter. So the seed is a symbol of potential. Jesus is saying that although the beginnings of the kingdom of God may seem small and insignificant, the number of people who follow him, who recognize his rule and reign in their lives, may have been few at that time, but the kingdom of God will flourish, it will grow. The kingdom of God has grown and flourished. We, be see, we see the beginning of that growth in the life of the early church in New Testament times. And the kingdom of God continues to grow and flourish as people come to faith in Christ and grow in their relationship with him. And we can just think of, of the millions of Christians that there are throughout the world in our day and in our generation. After Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection, just before his ascension, he told his followers, 
all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you to the end of the age. Jesus gave that commission to his followers at that time, but it wasn't just to his followers then, but to all who would become his followers, including those who are his followers today. Fulfilling the commission Jesus gave isn't something we do in our own strength, but in and through the power of the Holy Spirit living on us. Followers of Jesus, listen again to that commission Jesus gave to his followers and take it to heart. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. It's about numerical growth, and it's about spiritual growth. As each follower of Jesus chooses to recognize God's rule and reign in their lives, as they read and study the scriptures and live by the teaching of the Bible, as they, with the help of the Holy Spirit, obey what Jesus has revealed and taught. So it's about growth, the growth of the kingdom, the growth numerically, but also growth, the growth of the kingdom as people grow in their relationship with God and develop in their likeness to Christ. So it's about growth. And secondly, it's about transformation. Jesus asked, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a, about 30 kilograms of flour until it worked all through the dough. That's about 60 pounds or so of, of flour. Again, Jesus refers to something that has been familiar and well known. A small amount of yeast mixed into a large amount of flour causes the dough to rise. The yeast transforms the dough causing it to rise and produce fruit or produce bread that is soft and springy. The parable of the yeast emphasizes that transformation is a vital and key part of the kingdom of God. Personally, those who are members of the kingdom of God are being transformed as they live out their faith in daily life, as they engage with God with his word, and with God the Holy Spirit who comes to live in us when we put our faith and trust in Jesus as our Savior. Personal transformation as we follow Christ, as we respond to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, we are to continue being transformed progressively into Christ's likeness. Our lives are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. We are to press in to know more of God. We are to pursue personal transformation. And it's not just knowing facts about God, knowing about God. It's actually knowing God, pressing in to know more of God, and to pursue personal transformation when we're followers of Jesus. But more than that, we are to be those who are transforming society. We are to be salt and light in the community in which we live and move and have influence. People who live by the values and standards of the kingdom of God. People who reveal God's love to others. People who proclaim in word and deed the goodness of God and the grace of God. We are to be a positive influence and make an impact for God in the community where we are and in society. We are to be like the yeast in the dough, being transformed and being used by God to bring transformation in society. A mustard seed grows into a tree. Yeast transforms the dough. Growth and transformation. As followers, when we're followers of Jesus, May growth and transformation be priorities in our lives. Think of the potential of the seed that's planted in the ground. And from that moment, we come to faith in Christ, become members of the kingdom of God, 
that whole sense of growth and development for us. But also the yeast, that transformation that takes place in us and through us. Growth and transformation. May those be to the forefront of our minds as we follow Christ and as we live for him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that Jesus taught and did. And sometimes the things that he said sound so simple, and yet they are so profound. A seed planted in the ground, growing into a large tree. Lord, help us to see the significance of that for us personally as we think about our own spiritual growth and development, but to see the significance of that too as we think about the growth of the kingdom of God and our involvement and participation in accomplishing that. As we think of the yeast the impact that it has just in the flower, in the dough. That whole sense of transformation for us personally as we become more and more like Christ. And also that whole sense of transforming the society, the community in which we live as we live out our faith day and daily. So Lord, continue to speak to us, to minister to us by your Spirit, and help us to hear what you're saying to us and respond to you with wholehearted commitment and a desire to honour you and to serve you in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.
the judge of all, through the saving blood of your Son, you have brought us to the heavenly Jerusalem and given us a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Fill us with reverence and awe in your presence, that in thanksgiving we and all your church may offer you acceptable worship through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives to intercede with, seed for us now and forever. Amen. Lord of creation, we hold up to you the needs of the world, ever mindful of the many places where there is war, oppression and injustice. We pray especially for the people of Afghanistan a year after the return of Taliban rule. Lord, would you intervene and change the hearts of men whose actions are leading to poverty, hunger and suffering. Grant comfort and courage to the women and girls who are being denied education and work and whose freedoms are, are curtailed. As we remember their plight, teach us, Lord, to value the freedom that we enjoy and to use it wisely to build your kingdom here on earth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the friendship and fellowship at Holiday Bible Club this week. Bless all the young people who have taken part and grant that the seeds of faith sown this week would take root and flourish. Bless their parents and family members and help us all as a church family to nurture our young people, that they would grow in faith and love for you. We pray also for our young people who have received exam results this week. Whatever the outcome, we ask you to be with them and guide them as they make choices for the next stages of their lives. Help them to know that your love for them is unconditional and unchanging. We give you thanks for the family, friends and teachers who have influenced their lives so far. And we ask that whatever path they follow, there will always be people who will continue to support and nurture them in their faith. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for all those who are sick, suffering or in need, and especially those known to us. Heavenly Father, watch over those we love. Remove all anxious fears from them and from us. Teach us to know that you are always near and that we are one in you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of compassion, we hold up to you today those who are bereaved. Grant them the spirit of faith and courage to meet the days ahead with steadfast hope. And we give you thanks for the remembrance of all our loved ones who have gone before us and who are with you now in the communion of saints. Amen. Let us sum up all our prayers as we say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may we know the presence and power of God's Spirit at work in our lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. And then just in terms of announcement to say thank you uh, to Ava and all the team who were involved at Holy Bible Club uh, last week. It, it was an amazing time. I referred to it in, in the sermon earlier. Um, and, but also to say thank you to all of the boys and girls who came along, to the parents, carers and all who, who brought them there and encouraged them during this week. Looking ahead, just to mention, uh, we have two uh, barbecue and fun afternoons. One in St. Patrick at uh, St. Patrick's Church on the Saturday the 3rd of September from 2 to 4, and one the following Saturday the 10th of September here at Holy Trinity at the same time, 2 to 4. Please do spread the word about that. Do plan to come along yourself. So may the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. <laughs>